الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور ينفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد عباد الله اعلموا أن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our brothers who organized this event, especially those who chose the titles for this speaker. Say Ameen. Why are you so weak? Say Ameen for them. Ahsant. You know why? Every Sheikh, mashaAllah, tabarakallah, they had a beautiful title, easy title to manage. I think mine is the most difficult one. And that is how to make your wife happy. Every man who's sitting here, he's just struggling and asking himself the same question. How can I make my wife happy? And what would make my wife happy? And every man that I ask, almost everyone that I ask, other than three, each one of them said, I don't know. They don't know what would make or can make their wives happy. So tonight, insha'Allah, I want to touch upon a few points and it be idnillah with these points. We can all walk away out of this hall, be idnillah, knowing how to make our wives happy, be idnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we ready for this? I didn't call for janazah. I said, are you ready for this? Like the men is like, I don't know. Sis, sisters. I want to ask the brothers one more time. Brothers, are you ready? Yeah. You said that out of fear, right? <laughs> now, see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا From the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he spoke about the creations of the universe and this complex system that we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and from the ayat of Allah, that he created you husband and wife. Min anfusikum azwaja. For what purpose? So you may find comfort in your wives. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ And he plays between you two, husband and wife, مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً مَوَدَّةً means love, and rahma means compassion and mercy. And we want to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ He said, deal with them with kindness. Deal with your wives with kindness. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam proudly he used it to the Sahaba. خيركم خيركم لأهلي وأنا خيركم لأهلي He said the best of you are those who are good to their wives and I am the best of those who are good to their wives. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even the day that he was dying he used to say استوصوا بالنساء خيرا Be good to women. Be good to your wives. Make sure you are kind to them. So insha'Allah bi idnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to mention a few points. And these points bi idnillah, wallahi bi idnillah, if you implement them, your, your life will love you forever. She will love you forever. So what is the first thing that we need to do? First thing that we need to do is to show our wives that we love them. 
express that. Show them that we love them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not ashamed to declare his love for his wife. Amr bin Asi comes to the messenger of Allah and he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, man ahabbu nasi ilayh, who do you love most? He said, Aisha. Uh, Aisha. If I ask you, who do you love most? You say, my mother. Who's next? My grandmother. Who's next? My father. Who's next? My children. What about your wife? Oh yeah, she's me. Yeah, I love her too. That should not be the case. The messenger of Allah proudly, immediately, he said, Man nasi ilayh. Who do you love most? He said, Aisha. And then Amr ibn Asi said, I'm not asking about wives. I'm asking about men. We want to know who you love most. And look what he said. He did not say, I love so and so, but he connected to his wife. Qala abuha, I love her father. He didn't say, I love Abu Bakr, but he made sure that Aisha is in the middle of this speech, is the middle of the sentence. He said, I love her father. He could have said, I love Abu Bakr, my companions on the journey to the city of Medina, the first man who accepted Islam, but he did not say any of that. Rather, he said, I love Abu Ha most, I love her father most. So you gotta show your wife and let her hear that you love her all the time. Sisters, am I right? I can't hear you. Am I right? See? See? They know the truth. You know, a brother, mashallah, wallahi is not, I said to you, to his, I said, they had issue, I said, brother, when, did you, when was the last time I, you said to your wife, I love you? He said, last Eid. That's Eid. We're not praying Eid al Adha. I said, what, what, after that, you still love her? I love her, of course. But I said, what, what did you tell her? He said, no. I said, why wouldn't you tell her? He said, she knows I love her. But with women, that is not the case. With sisters, that is not the case. They need to hear it every single day, every single moment. When you leave the house, you say, honey, I love you. Don't forget that. And she says, I love you too. During your work time, you'll call her. I say, love, I love you. And she says, I love you too. When you come home, you say, I love you. And she should say, I love you too. One of the brothers, he said, Sheikh Saeed, it's not Salah, it's just a wife. Yes, but you need to say to your wife, I love you more than five times a day. Because for women, that is the fuel, that is the energy. When you show her that you love her and you let her hear that you love her, you absolutely, absolutely making her life better. Second thing, inshallah, we're running out of time. Second nasiha for men. Make sure you, you make your wife laugh all the time. Make, her, make sure that she smiles all the time. Be the comedian of the house, right? Be the funny person in the house. Do f stupid things. It's okay. If your wife likes it, do it. Listen to your wife. You know, don't say, I'm the man of the house. You know, when I come, the kids should hide. You know, you should run to the kitchen. You know, I don't want to see anybody around. No, you should be her joy. When she sees you, she should be ready to smile and laugh. That is the case. And that is the trick. Because all day long, maybe she's busy with kids, or maybe work, maybe with other, purpose, other issues with life. But when she sees you, you the source of her joy. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to have fun and joke with his wives. He used to be with her, talk to her, listen, will come to all. But this is very important. 
You know, most of the comedians, most of the comedians, especially the Muslim and non-Muslim, they get most proposals. You know that? You know that? It's not the serious man the guys, the serious sisters will run to. No, they love the funny man. So if you're funny, your, li your wife will love you because she doesn't want to be stressed. She want to smile. She want to laugh. She wants to be part of it. She wants you to be part of this. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always used to be aware of the mood of his wife. He always used to make sure that, and he used to say, I know when you're happy with me, and I know when you're mad at me. And she said, how do you know? How do you know? He said, well, when you're happy with me, you say, well, Rabbi Muhammad, I, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. But when you're not happy with me, you say, well, Rabbi Ibrahim, by the Lord of Ibrahim. By the Lord of Ibrahim. Uh-huh. So the messenger of Allah, every time he comes, he will gauge the emotions of his wife and he will make sure that she is in a better mood. Number three, wallahi, I'm running out of time and I can't get to every single point the way I want it. Number three, presents, gifts, always to your wife. Always to your wife. Gifts. Women love gifts. But look, see, the difference between men and women, you think your wife will, will evaluate you by the size of the gift. So if you buy her a car, she will love you more. Yeah, more than if you buy her, you know, a flower or something that she likes. Why? Because with men and women, there's a point system. What does that mean? Every time you give your wife something, she consider that one point, regardless of the size of your gift. You know that. So if you give her a flower or give her a vehicle, for her is one point. But for you, oh, the car cost me 50,000 pounds. And this caused me two pounds. So she would appreciate the car more than the flower. That is not how women work. That is not how they work. If you don't know that much, then you really don't know women well. Women, they love gifts. And by the way, you need to know how, what your wife loves. Maybe she doesn't want you to bring her an expensive gift every day. Maybe she just wants you to bring simple things. Maybe she loves certain types of coffee. So when you're coming home, then you, you stop by this coffee shop and you get, her, you get her that coffee. In her mind, it's not how much the coffee costs. It's like, no, he had me in mind. He was thinking of me. And that is what makes her love you more and would make her happy. Number four, be romantic. Uh, be romantic. See, most of the older generation, they don't know how to be romantic. Uh, sisters, am I right? I think we all should pray janazah on the older generation if they don't want to learn. Your wives, whether you're young and old, she wants you to be romantic. And romantic, again, is not according to the Western media, but romantic is, you know, you be kind, loving, you, you even touching your wife, holding her hand, holding her hand, that's a romance. You know, you come home and you kiss your wife. That's a romance. Before you leave home, you kiss your wife. That's a romance. And how did we learn this? From Hollywood? No. Messenger of Allah, according to Sahih al-Bukhari, Aisha said, where the, when the messenger of Allah used to leave the house, he used to kiss his wives and he used to go to the mihrab immediately. 
And in Sunan Ibn Majah, Aisha said, they asked, what was the life of lifestyle of Rasulullah at home? She said, as soon as he comes home, he used to take the miswak and use misaf. Why? Because he wants to smell fresh. He wants to smell nice when he's, getting a, when he's approaching his wife. Uh-huh. So that means you got to be romantic with your wife. Once, I'll tell you a funny story. The worst nasiha that I ever gave to somebody. This nasiha was to a man who was born in different parts of the world, who married a young lady who was born in the West. I told this in the Somali community. They, they know this story, but I'll tell you this. So what happened, the brother, you know, he doesn't know anything about being romantic. You know, but the young lady, she watched all these shows and she wants her husband to be romantic. You know, bringing flowers home, bringing, you know, chocolate like a, like a heart, you know, bringing something. And every day he comes home with empty hands. She said, my husband, I want you to be more romantic. He went out and he got berries, he got rice and chicken. <laughs> she said, Jazakallah khair, but I don't want to eat. He said, what do you want? So she said, okay. She tried to explain to the situation. And she said, I want you to, let us go to Sheikh Saeed. Those days, I'm sorry, but those days, I was known Dr. Love. This is before I made Toba. <laughs> because after that incident, I made Toba. So I, the, she said, let us go to Sheikh Saeed. So I, she, they came to me. I said, okay, what is the issue? I, he said, well, this is the issue. So he was a Somali brother. And I said to the sister, can you leave us? We want a private time. I want to educate. I want to I wanna give him a you know, crash course. She said, okay. So I said, listen to me, young man. Baris and Basso, you know, they're not going to cut it. So what should I do? I said, do the following. I said, ask your wife to go out of the house. He said, okay. I said, okay. They go to the flower shop and buy roses, red roses. You know, only the leaves. And he said, but she, does, she, she won't like that. I said, trust me. So he went and I said, also buy roses, the actual roses. So he did. Jazakallah khair. He was listening. So what he did, I said, what should I do with it? He said, okay. You make sure you spread the leaves from the door. So he spread the leaves around, mashallah, all the way to the dining table and make sure that you have nice dinner for your wife. He said, I don't know how to cook. I said, go to Somali restaurant, just get mousse and baris and all that. I would be fine, just get meals. So he did. So I said, okay, nice dish. Make, the, make sure the flowers is covering the table. And then, mashallah, tabarakallah. And then make sure flowers and leaves are all the way to the bedroom. And I said, dress nice. Dress nice for your wife. So Somali brother, jazakallah khair. He put ma'awis. You know what ma'awis means? Izar. <laughs> he put izar on. I thought he's going to put something nice, you know. Mashallah. You look like a mufti mink, you know, something like that. <laughs> but no. He put an izar on. And I said, okay. When, you, when she comes and opens the door, you know, you bite a flower like this. <laughs> bite like this. And when, when she comes, take the flower, and I said, I love you, my love, you know. <laughs> the miskin, he did not know the flower has thorns. <laughs> he didn't know. Or maybe he thought he can do it. So what he did, he bit the flowers, mashallah, and one of the thorns were like this on his mouth. And he wanted us to say, I love you. And what did he do? He all cut himself all the way up to here from inside. So he's bleeding. And instead of nice dinner, they end up in emergency. <laughs> so a few days come, he comes back. And he can hardly talk, and his cheek is that big because it's swollen. 
And he said, it's because of you people get divorced. <laughs> I said, subhanAllah, I was trying to make you romantic. So some of us, there's no hope for us. Others, we can learn. Five minutes, I'm running out of time. So what do you do? Be romantic in a way that suits your wife. Not romantic according to you, but romantic according to your wife. And that leads to the point that you should know what she likes, what she doesn't like. You should know what makes your wife happy and so on. The other point that I want to, to mention, I have five minutes, is spend good time with your family. Quality time, they say. Spend good time with your wife. And I don't mean spend time with your family, bring the children. No, 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 no. Lose the kids for one night. Donate them anywhere. Give them to your, anywhere. If anybody takes them, just give them away for that night. Give them away. So take them to your mother-in-law. Take them to anybody who will take them, mashallah. Even if you hire a babysitter for them, you take them out of the picture and you have this time, a night or a weekend or whatever time, only, and I say only for you and your wife. I think the most precious thing in your wife's heart, if you're a really truly good husband, that she wants from you is your time. Am I right, sister? See, they want your time. They don't want you to, you know, say, oh, I'm with you, but at the same time you text messaging somebody or you chit-chatting. No, they don't want that. They want you, they want us, husbands, that you say, I'm listening to you. Let her talk. Women talk a lot, tabarakallah, am I right? Women talk a lot. Allah gave them energy. You listen to her from Salat al-Fajr to Salat al-Isha, she's still talking, tabarakallah. She's still talking. It's okay, let them talk. Let them talk. But you respond smartly. Look at, are you more busy than the messenger of Allah? No. Are you more responsible of the affairs of the Ummah? No. But look, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih al-Bukhari was Sunan al-Tirmidhi wa ghayri. Messenger of Allah came home and Aisha is waiting for him and she tells him a story of 11 women and each one of them described her husband. The Messenger of Allah didn't say, I just came from a meeting, I was getting ready for a war, I have fatwa, I had issues with this, you know, some of the people trying to attack Muslims. He didn't say, I'm carrying the weight of the whole nation on my shoulder, I have no time for a wife. No, he sat there and he listened to her and he spent all the time that she needed from him, sallallahu alayhi wa That's why he said, I am the best husband amongst all of you. And women, by the way, you don't, wives, you don't have to understand what she's talking about. As long as she's talking to you, that's fine. Do you want her to talk to someone else? Do you want her to talk to her friends that tell her, you know, buy this, do this, give her wrong information? No, let her talk to you. And they love talking to their husbands. But sometimes because we are men and we think that they think like us and they feel like us, that she only needs a little bit of my time. She only needs an hour of my time. And that's a dhulm. Wallahi, that's a dhulm. Because your wife even if she had, especially those who have children, who's running after your kids, who's trying to prepare a meal for you, who's trying to look nice for you, and then at the end of the day, you want her just to go away. One of the Sahabi in that hadith, she says about her husband, well, I'm sorry, one of the ladies, she said, when he eats, he eats everything on the table, mashallah. When he drinks, he drinks everything. And then he goes to the room and he sleeps and he faces the wall. 
He doesn't extend his hand to heal what the pain is in my life. He doesn't do that. So don't be like that. Be someone that the wife would love to talk to. All the time, Wallahi, ya ibadullah. Wallahi, if you only know how much our sisters struggle, you would give much of your time for your wife, be ibn subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last point, ibadullah, I know the brothers are giving me a sign, the last point that I want to mention is the point of you, husbands, us, husbands, mashallah, tabarakallah, trying to let us show gratitude to our wives. Let us say to them, Jazakumullahu khair. Jazakallah khair for being my wife. Jazakumullah khair for being the mother of my children. Jazakallah khair for taking care of me. Jazakumullahu khair for being there for me when I need you. Jazakumullah khair for listening to me when I you know, complain about things. Be grateful to your wives. Be grateful. Because wallahi, behind every successful wife, every successful man is a righteous wife. Every successful man. Imagine the wives of the da'is. Imagine how successful, you know, mashallah, these da'is are. And who is carrying the load of the family? Wives. Imagine the wives of these brothers who are putting together this conference. Who is carrying the load? Wives. Remember. Remember, when you're running around, they're also carrying heavier load. So we got to learn to say, Jazakumallahu khair. And sisters, on behalf of every speaker that is spoke, on behalf of every volunteer that is married, I want to say to you, Jazakumallahu khair. May Allah bless you. Say ameen, brothers. May, say ameen. Wallah, you're so stingy, subhanallah. You want me to pray against them? Say uh, yes. <laughs> can you can you please? Where's the camera? I want to see that man. Where is he? Just kidding. It's just I'm just kidding. I'm just. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. May Allah subhanahu wa taala reward your sister with jazakum Allah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you all. And wallahi, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, man la yushkur al-nas, man la yushkur al-nas, la yushkur Allah, who is not grateful to men, who is not grateful to the people, who is not grateful to those who did him a favor, he is definitely not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to say to you, jazakumullahu khair, jazakumullahu khair, and forgive us for shortcomings. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.